we are going to talk about the project, okay? And then we will talk about the exam, all right? And we continue with the time and try to finish the time and then meet the ring, right? As of right now, every one of you should have the announcement on the change of the deadline. Do you? The change of every homework deadline. Okay. So we don't have many more homework left. Okay, we have just a little bit left. For the partial project is due on next Tuesday instead of today, right? So it's like you get a new project to do. So the partial project should not take much time at all. Okay. But nevertheless you have one more week to do it because I change it completely. Instead of the team, you do it by yourself. Who already have any collaboration with your team member? Okay, what, what did you do? You talk to your team member? Yeah, oh. the and, okay, I'm sorry for that inconvenience. Now you will do it individually. Okay, you will do it individually. The partial project of this course, I take the problem statement from 42.22. Who did not enroll in 42.22? Please raise your hand. All of you say 42.22. Okay, it's still next week, March 28th, okay? And the whole project is still on 25th of April. That is the whole project. This is an individual work that you share, the problem information with your team member in 4222. However, you must not share any information with your team member in 4222. However, if both you and your team member are assigned, to do the facility part of 4222, or assign to help on the facility part of 4222, then you can share the information with your 4222 team member. Okay? <laughs> the information that you share doesn't make your work that you submit to be identical to your team member because you do it independently, okay? And you share information. They're not supposed to just copy you, all right? So who has to do the facility portion in 4222? Okay, who don't who don't have to do anything on the facility portion on 4222 at all? It's not your responsibility. So most of you, right? So just some of you. Okay, stand up, stand up. Who has to do the facility portion on 4222? <laughs> Okay. Are you the only one to do it in your team? Who is the only one to do it in your team? Sit down. Sit down. So who has to do with your team member on facility portions? <laughs> only one person normally? Then how do you break it? So this means you should not share anything with your team member then. Okay, not share anything. So this assignment is this course, not 4222, but we take information from that course. Uh, let's go through this, okay. This project is to fulfill requirement of 4305, not 4222. Any information that is already shared with your team member before yesterday, there is fine, okay. But I don't think you finish or anything at all. Submit the update on the progress project for the partial report to get 10. Do at least one third of the total work. One third is 300 to 400 work. Total is 900 to 1,200 work. If you do not do it, it is counted as missing to work. The grade penalty to the description of the project assignment is shown below. Project assignment due 25 of April. Make the facility sign and relevant calculation based on the data from the CV design. Petroleum design too. This data include your location, visible data, flow, blah, 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 okay? If you don't have the data, but you have to do it, you assume it. I get the equation like, okay, I have to do separated calculation. I want to do separated calculation, but I don't have separated information from my team yet. Do I just skip it? Oh, I cannot do that. No, this is not design. I can understand if your number is not exact, but realistic. Okay, you can say, okay, I have, I don't know if my gas production is going to be one million or two million. It doesn't matter. 
or three million or four million. So you just pick one number. Okay, one number is like two million flow rate. Okay. Or I don't know if it's going to be two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Pick one. Okay. Viscosity. I don't know what is the viscosity. Pick one value. Okay. Realistic value. Okay. Uh, so this is maybe you cannot use this in the design because it's not realistic value. So uh, those who do it, you got to do it anyway. Okay, submit one set of the document, but I know if you're back lot, the grade is based on the completion of the report. This includes the number of words and the technical depth of the report, completion of the calculation, include the coordinates of the, oh, this is the big thing. Uh, the grade that you give to yourself will also be considered, okay? The grade, you will give the grade to yourself. Oh, no question yet until I finish this, okay? You must select three topics of these 21 topics. It is 21 topics. You select three of them and do it. Uh, or more, you can do more. From this 21 topic below, three to 400 words each. Totally about 900 to 1,200 words uh, that you have. If you cannot meet the number of word requirement, add more topics instead of trying to write something irrelevant. Okay. Every topic must come with an essay discussing the details of equipment, working principle, the selection criteria, future plan as the production fluid, composition of flow rate changes, or other related principle, you must select at least one topic that has calculation and do the relevant calculation. So there are three topics. Maybe you have one topic that is calculation and another two that doesn't have any calculation, it's fine. Okay. And relevant equation to show that you understand how to do it. Show numerical value in Excel or type and explain it in the main text. No handwriting is acceptable. It's accepted. Okay, required topic. Draw the facility diagram. Give the required essay something. Pressure drop in the pipe. Pressure drop in gas pipeline. Um, VRU. A pressure drop in a short line that connect from VIU to something. So you have pipe in your facility that have uh, gas. It may have some pressure drop. How much is that? It's not much, but how much? You may calculate that. That is counted too. Okay. Liquid pipe size selection. How big should be the liquid pipe? Erosional velocity in gas cell line. If you want to, typically in the design in the design class, your job is done once. You say the gas, right? Whatever uh, gas that passes the meter, any pressure drop beyond that point is not your business anymore. Okay? But in this class, you can do it. You can do that estimation calculation if you decide to. If you want to, you assume a flow rate and do the pipeline selection. This pipe that we sell the gas at 5 million standard cubic foot per day, it should be that big or something. And the pressure drop is about this. You use panhandle B, get this, get that. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk about panhandle B yet. Uh, separator sizing discussion, line heater. I suspect that your project doesn't have line heater or don't need line heater. You remember one chart that show the temperature drop, okay, when we have gas. If we have liquid co-produced with gas, the, the drop will be less. Okay. If we co-produce 20 barrel per a certain amount of gas, the temperature drop will be less and less and less. And if you have a lot of oil produced, like 200, 200 barrel, is, this calculation is irrelevant. Okay. But if you want to, you can assume some number and say, okay, there's all this, because you just learned about 100, right? I assume that this is this flow rate, this is that flow rate, and the factory of selection hybrid is um, look at the hybrid chart, look at the composition. I assume that I know the composition and I do the calculation of average flow rate. Who did it wrong? Many of you, right? Don't worry about that yet. I will explain why you should not worry about that too much. Okay, Hammer-Schmidt equation. I don't think you will need Hammer-Schmidt equation in this time, but in this class you may select this. Hit the trigger, gun barrel, pump calculation, compressor, uh, or prepared, quad or regulation discussion, SPCC plan. You may not have this, but in the design, you should have this. Uh, Indro, Kaliso Mata, 
Luis Rodriguez. Luis Rodriguez. Ama Zoko. Okay. I think I get the skin letter from none of them. Uh, what is this? Okay. Gas weakening, dehydration process, safety, related discussion. Okay, you select just three. Why this year is very lightweight? Because we put it in the final exam so that you have a happy time. Okay? We put this instead of have you replace the final exam with the project. We have the final exam instead of the project. Okay? Last year we don't have final exam, but this year we have final exam. And the project. And the project. But the project is not much. It's not a group. Think about one homework that you do. Okay. One homework, let's say homework about line eater. Okay. Homework about line eater. You need to add human word. Okay. Human word about selection criteria. Okay. Discussion detail of the equipment. Line heater consists of the coil inside and water bath. The water bath temperature should be less than 200 F to avoid evaporation. It works by using heat from water to heat gas inside the coil, and this allows the temperature to be hot so that when it passes to the show, the temperature will still be above the high deformation temperature for the case of single pass line heater. The way that we select it, number one, we calculate the uh, BTU per hour or firebox rating. Okay, then we look in the pressure drop in the coil. Uh, future plan as production change, if we have decreased in the gas flow rate, we may take it out or something like that. Okay, you discuss that if the flow rate change. Other related principle, you may discuss about the safety. It is not safe to operate it over 200 because water in the tank will boil or something. Okay? And use, uh, we use cloth or something, maybe you discuss that. This is the discussion of it. And in the, in the calculation, you say, okay, I have this flow rate, this much flow rate. Then you do the calculation and then you justify why it is correct or something. It's just like a small homework, okay? But this homework, you do it neat, very tidy, okay? Yes? We should have like a small homework. <laughs> <laughs> Every homework combined is 10%. This one is also 10%. Okay, so it has to be clean, okay? Write something to show that you know it. Let's see how JMD will get it, okay? In addition to your topic discussion calculation, you will need to submit add word count add word count in the parenthesis to show the number of words. At the end, you add 900 words, 1,200 words. You may go exceed 1,200 words, but I'm trying to not, I don't want to read too much. <laughs> Excel sheet show you calculation if you did calculation in Excel. Self-grading section. So this time you don't grade your friend. Okay, you just grade yourself. How do you grade yourself? When you grade yourself, use the following rule. Start with 100. Check if equation is copy and paste as a picture or not. If the picture, if a picture format, if it is a picture format, give minus 10. Check if self-grading section is available or not. If not, use 80 as a starting score. Okay, if you don't do self-grading, you get, you get 80. If the number of words is less than 100 words, just give to zero to yourself. Okay. <laughs> if you did not show any calculation, no calculation, just give zero to yourself. Okay. If you use handwriting instead of typing equation, use handwriting in any part of the report, just give zero to yourself. Okay? <laughs> Check the depth of the discussion for both calculation and discussion topic. If you at least have the discussion on working principles, selection criteria, the detail of equipment, don't deduct any points, otherwise deduct 5 to 15 points per topic as appropriate, <laughs> depending on the technical depth that you did. So, how do we grade it? It's a lot, so I look at it, I scan it, 
you have you you write something about working with social media. How like it will work? Okay, I know that you know it, but you have to show that you know how to do it. Uh, how separator work? The separator work by the difference in the gravity. It work better when the viscosity is less. This kind of thing, okay? Check if the calculation is correct or not, okay? If you give the wrong answer for the calculation, deduct 10 to 20 points per topic. How do you know that your calculation is wrong? You have 63 versions multiplied by 3, and each of you assume a certain flow rate is not the same. Do I go and do the calculation according to what you did? No, I don't do that. How can I do that? So what I do is, I can I cannot really check if it is correct or not, but I can check if it's totally wrong or you do something that doesn't make sense. So you try to use um, do the vertical separator sizing, but you use the charge of the line heater. I don't know that. Okay, you use the charge of the barrel. I don't know that. So if you say something that really off, like okay, we need. I think some, someone tell me that the compressor we need like one million horsepower, that kind of thing, okay? If you say, okay, I need one million horsepower, I think you need minus 20 for that one million horsepower or something that really make, doesn't make sense. Gas velocity that I have is 1,000 feet per second. What? Something that really doesn't make sense, I will notice it, okay? It is your responsibility to show that you have complete technical knowledge on the calculation and the discussion of the selected topic. It does for the point as appropriate, but not more than 20 points per topic for the first three topics. If you feel that discussion or the calculation of this that topic was covered in the lecture, but you fail to incorporate it, then we will review the presentation slide to check if you missed the major discussion given in the lecture or not. Okay. All right, how anything work, you cover most of it. And if it, so this part is to make sure that you don't feel those 300 words with something irrelevant. From the newspaper, 1990, blah, 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 blah. No, get to the point, something that is relevant, okay? For greater, check for any plagiarism, copy from other people, internet without reference, or present other people work as you, if found, give zero to the student, and she or he will get there for the whole course. If you do, if you work as a team on or before this day, you share information with your team member. Clearly indicate this in the grading yourself section so that it is not counted as plagiarism. Who did this? Just a couple of you write it in your partial report. What did you do? How did you share your information with your team? Okay. So this is needed for the partial report. So that if the whole report you copy from your friends, then I can tell that it address and then you get there. Okay? How difficult this is, you just review it carefully, the material. You open the presentation slide, you review it, what I said in class, right? And you like make a summary and come up with your own number, show some calculation. Something is not discuss much in class, like the lag in it, it has a pump, it has a sensor to remove that, so you open the slide or you open the video that is in the field trip, that talk about that you may do internet, you whatever you have, don't try to do copy and paste, give the link and make an explanation, how many horsepower do we need if you want to calculate that, okay? This is just to show that you know about the facility, but not too much, you just show three cases that you want. Any question on this? So it is individual project. Is it fair now? No. Is it better? You have enough time to do it? Okay, let's talk about the exam score. I upload the um, solution of the exam. Uh, what I will do is, next Tuesday, okay, after the class or something, we will scan it. Okay? and we will upload it as a reply for your homework one, okay? I tried that with one student and it worked. So you will get the electronic copy of your exam, all right? If you have question, then we will have the session on next Thursday and Tuesday after that.
for you to meet with creator. Okay? So please review the solution first. For this week, you don't know your score yet, right? Until next Tuesday. So tell me what's wrong with the solution. So this is going to be unbiased input from you. Yes, sir. Can I get the score back before then, even if we don't want to see the test? Like you can't just post the actual score itself? Uh, she has fixed time too. So she. <laughs> you will know your exam score soon. But you just want to know the number? Yeah. Without the chance of asking anything? No, well, we want to know the number, but then take the chance of asking. Okay. You will. I will try to put the number in, okay? You will know your number. Once you know your number, I don't have any question at all, okay? Until you, until next Thursday, how about that? Yeah. I will check your, I give you the number and you review this exam solution, okay? And then we will scan it and you will get the actual copy of the exam to see what happened, all right? Is that better? Uh, 4.1, the answer has to be that. If it is something else, there's no partial credit. There's two questions, there's no partial credit. Like the value of C over there that we asked in the quiz a couple times. So there's no partial credit over there. Average molecular weight, uh, there's no partial credit over there. If you don't get that much, you get zero. Okay? If you don't get that much, you get zero. Uh, Let's take a look at the score in general before you know your score. How about that? Okay. So you may have like a fair discussion about it. So we have 11 people get the score more than 3.0103.8. 11 people. That is 17% of the class. Okay. We have totally 20 people. Okay. 20 people get 103 or more. That is 32% of the class. 32% of the class. We have uh, totally 34 students, totally 34 students, which is kind of half of the class, 54% of the class, okay, get 92 or more. Okay, 92 or more. Hopefully you are that 54% of the class, okay. I have 44, uh, <coughs> 44 people or 71% of the class get 81 or more. Okay? And okay, of course, I have 11 people get between 70 and 80, 4 people get between 60 and 70, 2 people get between 47 and 60, 1 people get between 36 and that. Okay? So, what we actually do for the exam, okay? Let's review the syllabus a little bit so that when you get the uh, when you get uh, the actual score, you don't get panic. Okay. The syllabus. Oh, we have it over here already. Totally is one twelve. Okay, totally is one twelve. Middle exam point is thirty. Final exam point is forty. Okay, that's on the syllabus. So, if you get both of them zero, if you get both of them zero, you will get 112 minus 70, which is what? 42. So, I assume that maybe you didn't attend every class, or most of you attend every class, so you get that two point, and all this, maybe homework you should get 9 to 10, right? No problem. Quiz, you should get about 8 to 10. Cost project, you should get about 10. That's 10, or 9 to 10. So, assume on average, we have some... You miss about 2 points. Okay? So, you start with 40. So, you miss about 2 points, you start with 40. So, I assume if you do the same thing, same performance, as in the midterm exam, in the final exam, so midterm exam, if you get 86, okay, and you do the same, so the raw score for the total grade is 
21.5. If you do the same thing again, if you get 86 again in the final exam, totally you will get 90.1. Okay. So 90.1 will be A. And 90.1 will be A. So this means we have more than 96, we may have about uh, between 34 and 44, okay, maybe a half a bit. 39 people will get A. Yes. Is that 90%? Is that 9% 112 or is that 91% or 91%? So if you get 120, you will get 110. So I assume that you lose two points. If you get 220 on both exam, you will get 110. Because I assume that you lose two points. Alright. So if you get so in this class I expect about thirty nine students get A. Okay, thirty nine students get A. So about half the class. If you get okay. If you happen to get thirty five, if you happen we have one student get thirty six. Okay, we have one student get thirty six. If you happen to get thirty what? Do you have 35? Don't, don't be worried about it too much. Right? You, of course, should do a little bit better on the final exam. But if you do that again in the final exam, what's going to happen is you will really totally get 60.4. 60.4 is, what is 60.4? It's a D. That I cannot help, right? But if you get 62, Twice. If you get 52 twice, you will get, you will barely get sick, okay? Alright? So, keep in mind, when you know your actual score, that we don't curve it for individual exams because the whole thing is already curved to 112, okay? And when I look at the distribution, it's not that difficult, but I understand that the mistake can happen. Any question on this? No? Okay. Uh, so you do, how do you maybe get A, get B, or something, it's a good grade. Alright, uh, next we will try to finish this palm one. Okay, palm one. Are you ready for palm one? Oh, one good reason that you should review the midterm exam is this. Midterm exam solution, okay, because the final exam, some part of it, okay, maybe 10 percent, 20 percent will come from the midterm exam. Not exactly from the midterm exam, but the content that is already covered before midterm. Okay, so try to review the exam solution. Okay, on video we already have that, and last time we stopped when we talk about the palm example. Okay, this palm example. All right, let me review this quickly. So in this example, we go from zero degree, uh, zero velocity over here to about zero velocity over here because it's expanding the tank. So there's no pressure drop due to acceleration. In the actual case, when we start the pump, we go from no velocity, so let, let's say I start the pump and the fluid is in this line. So at that point, that fluid has a certain velocity, right? It goes from zero and it flows the pipe. That velocity is not zero. So when we have the velocity that is not zero, we have this term, rho v squared, which is a C. Okay, this term is pressure drop due to acceleration go from zero to um, some number. So this means if we pump fast, 10 gallon per minute, or 100 gallon per minute, we have different acceleration or pressure loss. But that loss is not that much, okay, if you think about this. Because there's another term, which is this one. Friction will be more, okay, friction will be more. So most of the time, you worry about friction more than the velocity. This means if you have the pipe that is big enough, okay, and friction is not much, so this means 
you may need to consider that. Okay, but if you neglect it, it's not going to change from one horsepower to two horsepower or anything like that. Okay. Horizontal flow, most of the pressure drop occur by is due to friction. That's horizontal flow. Friction plus E sub V term. E sub V is the acceleration of pressure loss due to elbow, sudden expansion, sudden contraction, any restriction that you have in the pipe. So this thing accounts for about 80, 90 percent of the pressure loss. For the vertical flow, 90 percent of the pressure drop comes from gravitational term. Okay, that's gravitational term. Um, if you have homework about this, homework will be posted next Tuesday because we have the debate on everything, but uh, we will be still be on time. Please review this and understand which part is more important than which part. Okay? This, this number show that. Alright, you know how to use this chart, correct? Okay, we have relative roughness. The equation that you should write in the information chain is this equation. Keep in mind that, that F sub F is fanning friction factor. But the equation given to you earlier is F sub M, Mooney friction factor. Okay, if you get fanning friction factor, multiply by four, you get Mooney friction factor. Um, Okay, so we already discussed that. In what case do we have pressure gain? Can we have pressure gain when we have flow? Who want to help me with that? Or you want me to call the name? Pressure gain. Yeah. What case? <coughs> Flowing downhill, we have pressure gain. Okay, that's true for single phase case. Okay, mostly liquid. In two phase flow, Go up, we have pressure drop. Go down, we don't quite gain pressure. We will talk about that later, but as a rule of thumb for two phases, if you have down, downward flow, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, when you flow down, you don't gain pressure, okay? Single phase flow, yes. All right, uh, that is, okay. This slide that talk about the pump speed, we, <coughs> We skip that, okay? This we skip and we will have it for that level. Centrifugal pump, put it in series, put it in parallel, okay? I made the correction on this slide. So it says centrifugal pump will be operated as single or series in parallel or in combination. When pump are operated in series, the headers are additive. Okay, the, head, the heads are additive at a given rate. When pump operated in parallel, the flow is additive. So one pump, and we have two pumps in series, so we have more head. This means that it can give more, or it can withstand more pressure. This is not the system curve, this is the pump curve. So when we two, put two pumps in series, like an edge pump, so it can withstand more restriction in the pipe. Okay. If we want more flow rate, we put it in parallel. Okay. That helps with the flow rate. Uh, <coughs> good thing, okay, with centrifugal pump, inexpensive, no pulsating flow. You know the type of the exam, right? you, you, may be, you may have to afford something. So try to review this. Uh, Rewrite yourself. One thing that you should know is about the low such and pressure, okay? because it's very little pressure drop and no small clearance between such and flange and impeller, they can operate at low such and pressure. Okay? And the good thing with it is no pulse, no pulsating flow. Pulsating flow comes when you have a piston, especially for single acting. Double acting will have less pulse, but you can have pulse. So, centrifugal pump, inexpensive, no pulse, okay? can do low such a pressure. Okay. Not good for viscous fluid. Okay. Not good for viscous fluid. It can make self-heating. Self-heating means 
Okay, viscous dissipation, if we change from the mechanical kinetic energy, it becomes heat when we spin viscous fluid, okay? Typically, if we just pump water, it doesn't do that. It, it doesn't do it that much, it may do some. But for viscous oil, if we use a centrifugal pump, it generates heat, okay? It generates heat. And it's not good for something that is viscous. For example, emulsion. If you have emulsion, you have emulsion going to the pump. What happens with emulsion? So if you if I have emulsion with big big droplet, okay, big droplet. This big droplet is not stable. Eventually, it will break, right? So it's not quite do anything. But if I have centrifugal pump, centrifugal pump will keep spinning and breaking this droplet to be a very very small droplet. And is if you have many tiny droplet, a lot of them we have a lot more uh, viscosity. So viscosity can be not can be it is a function of the droplet size distribution too. But for the normal droplet size distribution or the in general, we can use um, um, what is that Brinkman correlation in the. You remember Brinkman correlation? Something to the power of minus 2.5 in the emulsion section? Did I talk about that? Did you prepare for the exam? Okay. Do you know that viscosity of emulsion is more than water and also more than oil? Yes? Brinkman co correlation is a correlation that you use when we have emulsion. Um, it is in. Emulsion slide. Okay. It is this one. You use have seen it before? So this correlation tell me that emulsion has higher viscosity than the oil phase and higher than the emulsion phase. If you have a difficult pump, what happened? This equation may be wrong. The actual viscosity could be higher than this. Okay? Because this is for the general case that the drop droplet break not artificially, like break naturally. If we artificially break the droplet, it could be more. Okay? But at least it is that. Bring my correlation. Alright. <clears throat> Disadvantages only practical for achieve high pressure when there are large flow rate. Okay, we, if we want more pressure, we may have to do it like edge pump. You remember edge pump then? It's a series of centrifugal pump put together. The picture that I showed you earlier on. Okay. Lower maximum efficiency compared to comp reciprocating pump. The reason that it's lower efficiency is because when we do reciprocating pump, uh, we directly push it forward. Okay, but this time we spin it with the hope that it will move forward. It's different, right? So it's less pressure compared to PD pump in general. Renal number formula, I think we have this in the homework, is it? Yes, okay. We have this in the homework that you show how to generate that number 6.7 something times 10 to the power of minus 4. That is used in example from first Stuart Lightfoot that you have seen earlier. You remember this number? 4.6 something? We use it in that palm that go up down. Okay? Try to go over it and be ready for the final exam for this month. On a quiz. It may not be this, but I I hope if you can do this, you may be able to do something similar or you may be able to do this exactly. Okay? Are you gonna be trying for it? Okay, it will be an exam. Very likely, but maybe not. Uh, famous in the conversion error. Uh, did we go over this? Okay, we did already. In charge, the error for the conversion is very costly. And this is unit. Okay. Methane, propane, butane, pentane. You may know the names. Do you know that it's like C2H6 or something? You need to write it down if you don't know. Next time, no one gonna tell you during the exam, okay? What is the formula for butane? 
You have. But if you don't know it, this kind of thing. Four, right? You have carbon, 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 carbon. Four of them. You draw a line. So at the end, it has three more legs for hydrogen, and this has two more legs for hydrogen, two more legs for hydrogen, three more legs for hydrogen. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.